Let's turn now to Democratic Senator Cory Booker. He's not on the ballot this year, but he's been crisscrossing the country to campaign for his fellow Democrats, helping to get out the vote in key battleground states ahead of Tuesday's election. He's been to Arizona, Wisconsin, Nevada, North Carolina, just to name a few. And now he's here on this week. Good morning, Senator. It's great to have you on this morning. We're just two days from Election Day. In mid-September, 538 Senate forecast gave Democrats a 71 percent chance of holding on to the Senate majority. Now Republicans have a 55 percent chance of taking it from you. What happened? Well, look, the party in the White House usually loses during midterms. But the reality is we still have a very strong pathway, not just to keeping the Senate, but really picking up seats in Philadelphia, excuse me, in Pennsylvania and in places like Wisconsin and North Carolina. This election still is in the balance. And the reality is we're bucking what are usual trends. And I think we're bucking them because folks know at the end of the day, do they want to go back to the sort of Donald Trump politics that divided our nation, undermined our democracy and really preference their signature bill was a big giveaway to the largest corporations and the richest in America. And even though our economy is tough, people think about it and say, wait a minute, this is the party trying to protect unions. This is the party that made sure we did things to lower prescription drug costs and lower health care costs, that this is the party at the end of the day that's trying to protect fundamental freedoms like the right to control your own body. So I think that this is a tough election season. It's a midterm election. Uh, but I still see a pathway for us to maintain control of the Senate. So what are the challenges with that? We know Chuck Schumer said you might even gain seats in the Senate. How does that happen? Well, it happens by voter turnout. I mean, when I'm uh, going around the country, I see a lot of enthusiasm. But at the end of the day, we've got to translate to that, uh, to people getting out. And I, I see a lot of candidates. Mr. McConnell admitted <laughs> that they have a candidate quality problem on the other side. And so from Georgia to Pennsylvania, people have real stark choices. Out in Arizona, they have choices between somebody that wants to preserve our democracy, bring people together, versus a type of brand of politics really that undermines our democracy. There is a lot on the line, and we have to remember, after what we saw at January 6th, Republican or Democrat, we should be electing people that believe in our democracy, that believe in our traditions, and that ultimately want to unite people and not divide them. There's a culture of contempt in this country. You're seeing election workers get increased threats. You're seeing judges get increased threats. Heck, you're even seeing members of Congress, as we saw what happened with Paul Pelosi. Something is going wrong in our country where rising political violence, rising threats uh, are really threatening who we are as a people. And I hope as people go to the polls, they elect folks that want to unite us, not divide us that want to bring people together to focus on our common cause, uh, not really be about contempt and anger. But, but this is Senator, a time for us to have sound government. S Senator, as we said, the economy is the top issue for 80 percent of Americans in our ABC Washington Post poll. And yet this week, and you're talking about this, too, you had President Biden give a major speech on saving democracy, barely mentioning the economy or crime. Obviously, democracy is an important issue. But was that the right thing to be stressing at this moment in the midterms when so many Americans are worried? You know, I stood side by side with Catherine Cortez Masto in Nevada or Mark Kelly uh, in, in Arizona, side by side with candidates uh, Tim uh, Ryan in Ohio. Every single one of them is talking about kitchen table issues. And when things are really stressed, which party has your back? Prescription drug costs, Democrats lowering them. Health care costs, Democrats lowering them. When it comes to creating good union jobs, uh, we were the party that didn't just talk about infrastructure week, but got the biggest infrastructure bill, investments in our communities that we've seen in generations. At the end of the day, one party has shown when they were in power, they're giving the biggest tax cuts and tax breaks to the wealthiest. The other party, we were one vote shy 
of passing the biggest middle class tax cut and working class tax cut in American history, making the child tax credit permanent. But, but so Senator, the, the polls have back, tightened. The polls have tightened. What about the messaging? Alyssa Slotkin from Michigan, one of the most vulnerable members of Congress, told The New York Times, the truth is Democrats have done a poor job of communicating our approach to the economy. If you can't speak directly to people's pocketbook and talk about our vision for the economy, you're just having half a conversation. Did Democrats miscalculate just how important this issue is? You know, again, I'm looking at uh, all the Tip O'Neill saying all politics is local. And when I've stood with uh, House members who are running for re-election and senators, I know what their messaging is. I know what their closing argument is, is that when this country is going through tough times, whether it's a pandemic or inflation rising, who is really going to have your families back? And, and I've heard people get, show receipts of what we've accomplished in terms of helping to lower costs and really a firm message that we were one vote shy, as I said, of the biggest middle class tax cut, one vote shy of protecting fundamental rights. The individual people I see out there campaigning are speaking towards the pocketbooks of this country and reminding people about what Donald Trump's agenda was when he had the reins, not just uh, uh, economic policy that favored the rich, uh, but also things that undermined our very fundamental uh, beliefs as a democracy. Okay, we thank you so much for joining us this morning, Senator. Good luck. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.